Okay, so let's get right into the unboxing. So this is the Cooler Master T20 CPU cooler. It's a relatively small cooler and it's come at a very cheap price. So today I'm going to unbox this thing, make a little quick review and see how it compares to the AMD Wraith Spire, which is the stock fan for AMD's Ryzen series. So the box is a little damaged during postage but that shouldn't matter too much so let's get into it. I will have the timelines where I do the testing, the unboxing and all the other stuff written in the description so that you can skip through the video. But I would like it if you just watch everything and let the ads run through because I need that money. So in the box, there's this user manual for both Intel and AMD motherboards. So this box, this, so this product comes with a stand for the Intel circuits but not the AMD because most AMD motherboards come with their own standoff so you can use the one from your motherboard. So here's the fan itself, it's relatively small, almost the size of my own hand. It's got f two copper pipes running out and a single fan blowing the air. It's pretty light as well and so that's pretty much what it looks like, it's just a pretty normal small CPU cooler that stands vertically. So this is the stand for Intel motherboards. It should be compatible with most of the new ones, so that shouldn't be a problem. And inside this small little package that contains all the stands for the motherboard, there is a little bit of thermal paste that they gave us. So it's pretty helpful if you don't have any and you can just tear this one off and use it. Now moving on to my computer case, so this is a sleeper build and this is the Wave Spire. So in, in this desktop case, the airflow is very bad so I'm, I need to have a better fan that directs airflow directly to the exhaust fan. So these are the motherboard standoff that comes with your AM4 motherboard. So now with the motherboard on the outside, it's time to clip on the cooler into the motherboard. So it's a pretty simple step. There are two standoffs and basically you just clip the front and then you clip the back. If you're finding it a little difficult to clip it down, that means the standoffs are way too short. So a little trick for this is to unscrew the standoffs a little bit so that they can stand taller and then tightening back the standoffs. But sometimes if you see the motherboard bending, it's time to stop. You can leave it a little loose, it doesn't matter. As long as the CPU won't fall off, it's okay. Just leave it there so that it doesn't damage your motherboard. And then we're done. So if you take a little closer look, you can see that I have loosened the standoffs just a little bit because that's as far as it'll go and the fan is facing towards the RAM and it blows through to the exhaust fan and after you plug in the fan control to the motherboard you can put it back to the desktop Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's done. That's the back side. And you 
can see the small little heatsink that touches the CPU fits nicely with the processor itself. It's just perfectly sized and it won't fall off even if I wiggle it. So now this thing is back to my PC and it's time to turn it on. And this PC case has absolutely no room for cable management so I just have to leave all the cables like this. It doesn't really matter because you can't see the inside. And now the computer is turned on and the fan is spinning and it's blowing air directly to the exhaust fan which is exactly what I wanted. So there is a fan here and I will explain how the airflow in this PC works. So on an Intel motherboard it's pretty straightforward as well. It bolt the standoff bolts on exactly like how an Intel fan would bolt on using plastic clips. So you just have to put all the clips into the holes and just mount the CPU cooler exactly the way I did for the AMD motherboard. There, there are two clips here and you just clip them on there, very similar. So on this particular motherboard, there are a few capacitors there and luckily for me, the standoff clears them. So this is a very nice thinking from Cooler Master I guess, or maybe it's the standard height. But I'm not using it for this particular motherboard, I'm just running a test for an Intel platform and it works. So the cooler just clips on top exactly like the one before. Okay, so this is a picture of my desktop without all the power supplies and cables and using the raised wire. So the air comes in from the bottom and from the side of the case and it goes up to the graphic card which gets really hot and all the hot air goes into the raised wire. And the raised wire will just dissipate all the heat around the desktop. And so in the T20, it will blow the air directly into the exhaust fan so that the power supply has air to breathe and the graphics card has some cool air to breathe as well. So this is not just about making the processor cooler, it's also about improving the airflow in my desktop. So moving on to the game test, you can see that the temperature difference is not much, but it definitely helps my desktop in cooling because when I was using the race fire, the side of my desktop gets quite hot, especially in the graphics card area, because the race fire is blowing air everywhere instead of blowing directly to the exhaust fan. The, the whole inside of the desktop gets pretty hot. You can also tell by the graphic card temperature it's getting lower as well. So while it is a, just a little bit better than the race fire, it definitely helps direct the airflow inside the desktop. So at least it's better for cooling the whole desktop. So I hope this video has helped you in any way, so maybe if you wanna decide to purchase this thing or maybe buy something better, it's up to you, because this thing doesn't have 
much difference between the race fire but it definitely does improve the airflow. So thanks for watching, please subscribe to my channel, I'm trying to get up to 5000 subscribers. Thanks for watching.